The family of 16-year-old Harry Pittman, who was stabbed to death on New Year's Eve, say they've been left devastated, saying they have not yet been able to take the dinner that was waiting for him out of the oven. A 16-year-old was arrested on suspicion of murder following the incident at Primrose Hill, but has since been released on bail pending further inquiries. Join me, join me now to discuss the issue of knives on our streets. Former police detective Peter Blexley and chair of Safer Neighbourhood Donna Marie Turner. Peter, knife robberies are up in London by 36%. In the West Midlands, we've seen a 5% drop. In Greater Manchester, a 16% drop. So why is London bucking the trend? How is this city, our capital, so out of control? Unfortunately, I think we have many of those in senior command roles within the Metropolitan Police that rather foolishly and misguidedly think that policing is a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, it isn't. Being popular is something that the police really should just park to one side and, quite frankly, ignore. Because if they stick to the fundamentals of policing, and by that I mean patrol the streets, make those streets a hostile environment for criminals, investigate crime promptly, professionally, to the best of their ability, lock up bad people, do all of that effectively and robustly, then the silent mainstream majority will quietly respect you and like you, even though, of course, <laughs> those who are of a criminal fraternity mm -hmm. will dislike you, and that's what you want. If you're a cop, you should wear that as a badge of honour, disliked by criminals. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Yeah. So until the police really have a reset and forget about appeasement to various campaign groups and various minority communities, because you will have engagement with every minority community, because, sadly, every community suffers from crime. Mm -hmm. So you'll engage with them anyway. And if you're doing it, as I said, through investigating crime and patrolling the streets, they, the law-abiding, will quietly respect you and you needn't worry about trying to make yourselves popular. Well, Mayor of London, Steve Khan, said um, that phone companies are partly to blame for this and that there's not enough done to stop phones, but once they're stolen, to stop them being able to be reused and, and sold. Yeah, the, the, the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, is very good at blame shifting, no, no matter what the issue might be. But irrespective of that, of course, there is some things that uh, mobile phone manufacturers can do. There are things that social media platforms can do, alter, monitor, regulate and therefore reduce crime. They're absolutely a given and there should be far more robust uh, lobbying by senior police and politicians to make those people in the tech industry do what they can do. Likewise, with the motor industry, there's more that the motor industry can do to reduce crime. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, if the police stick to those basics of policing, then crime will reduce, public respect will grow, although the police now, of course, are obsessed with trust and confidence. Well, I think some of that is gone forever, really, unless they really have a reconnect with what they're there for, with who they are, they are there for, because they're there for the public, not just their minorities that they want to engage with, then we will all benefit, no, no matter the colour, race, creed, sexuality of any of us, mm -hmm. with an effective police doing what I mentioned just a few moments ago, properly will all benefit. Now, regards um, knife crime in the capital, mm. you and I have spoken about this many times before, County line drug gangs. Like, how much of a problem has that become now? Well, of course, our whole prohibitionist attitude to drugs is foolhardy. We fought the war on drugs for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. It's a war that cannot and will not ever be won. All it does is creates huge employment for criminals because the illegal drugs industry is the fourth biggest industry in the world and yet we leave it all in the hands of criminals until and i can only touch on this briefly unfortunately but until we legalize and regulate regulate all illegal drugs 
then we are simply reinventing the wheel. The harm continues, the criminality continues, the crooks get richer and no one benefits. But instead of going after just purely um, the drug dealers and, the, and these kids carrying knives, shouldn't we be going after the, the cocaine users, the customers, because they're the ones who are driving this demand for drugs? If we, if we stop the demand, surely that reduces the amount of people who are going to be trying to deal. Utterly impossible. There are so many millions of drug users in the UK and we've only got 100,000 plus police officers. It's utterly impossible. With the scale of the industry as it is, mm -hmm. things are never going to change. In fact, they're going to get better. If we legalised and regulated the industry, like we do with cigarettes, like we do with alcohol, then yes, there will be problematic users of drugs like there are with alcohol and mm -hmm. cigarettes and all of that. I get that. But when we do legalise and regulate, we will raise billions upon billions in revenue. We'll reduce the prison population overnight by about 10% at least. And there will be so much money available with which to go into schools and educate children away from, from drugs, mm -hmm. like we do with cigarettes. And largely, a lot of primary school educators have been very successful in doing that. But as long as we leave the industry in the hands of the criminals, there will be people doing their deals in gloomy car parks and grubby alleyways yeah. with drug dealers with a knife or a nine mil down their back. Mm -hmm. They will continue to shoot, stab and murder each other because it's a lawless world yeah. that drug dealers operate in. And they will encourage people to take more drugs and more addictive drugs. So the damage, the harm will just continue. Of all those middle-class people mm -hmm. hoovering up cocaine, and there are hundreds and thousands of them, yeah. they hold down jobs, they raise decent kids, and they contribute to society by going to work and paying their taxes. Changing your mental state is the most natural thing on earth. It's why people have two sugars in their tea, go for a run, read a book, and so on and so forth. Uh -huh. It ain't ever going to go away. Well, let's go now to Donna Marie Turner from Safer Neighbourhood Board Chair. Good afternoon, Donna. So, Good afternoon. So, thanks for joining us. Um, as I said at the top of, of this, uh, this section, knife robberies are up in London by 36%. This is a trend that seems to be going against other parts of the country. Can you have, do you have any insights into why knife robberies are up in our capital? Unfortunately, no. I don't have any special insights into why knife robberies have increased. Um, I just think there are so many contributing factors. We could be here for the next 24 hours talking about all of them. Um, and so, you know, I, I tend to stick to my lane. So um, unless this is a conversation around some of those contributing factors, like the cost of living, like lack of aspiration, like healthcare, all of those things, um, then, I, you know, I, I think I should stick to what I'm best known for rather than kind of quivering on the outside of this conversation. OK, Donna, but you work for or with the Safe Neighbourhood. What is it that you guys do to make our neighbourhood safer? So I'm based in the borough of Croydon and um, we have done lots, a whole range of things in terms of make, trying to make, trying to make a neighbourhood safer around this area of, of crime and criminality. Um, and I'd just like to say, I don't really, personally, I want to express on this platform, my condolences for the family and friends of the young man who lost his life so sadly on New Year's Eve. I think sometimes we can get carried away with the context and not actually kind of center our comments on the family and, and friends who would have been affected. So I just want to say that. Um, but I think one of the things that we've we've done in Croydon is we acknowledge where we where where we where our starting point, uh, and we have kind of brought together almost a team around the family kind of approach. So we work with our local authority, we work with our local police Oh, I'm sorry, Donna, we can't hear you clearly there. But Peter, I think what Donna's saying there is, and it's a sentiment that I, I definitely think is important, starting with the parents, starting with the community. Surely if parents, are, when I was a kid growing up, my mom and dad knew where I was at all times of the day. When I finished school, I'm an after school club. From after school club, I'm home for tea. That was it. If I'm, if I'm outside playing in the street, I'm allowed to play on my little block, then I'm back in for, for bed. It's, it almost feels as if there's a, there's a lack of parenting in some communities these days. Oh, I think that's one of many reasons behind this knife crime epidemic. And I know that Donna 
and her and her friends, her fellow volunteers, do some brilliant work in Croydon, which is known by many as the knife crime crime capital of the knife crime capital, mm -hmm. because Croydon is the borough within all of the London boroughs that is plagued with dreadful knife crime issues, murders and stabbings and the like. All praise to Donna and her co-volunteers for trying to do what they are doing. But this matter has got grossly out of hand. Mm -hmm. Young Harry Pittman, rest his soul, the latest teenage victim in London, the 22nd teenager to die this year. The time is for action, talks over. And going back to what I said about policing not being a popularity contest, until the police actually almost put the earmuffs on to some of the criticism, and instead of being shaped and moved and manipulated by it all, if they actually just connect with what have we got to do to reduce these dreadful numbers? What unpopular things might we have to do to reduce these numbers? And stop worrying about trying to gain public popularity because, let's face it, trust and confidence in the police has never been lower, mm -hmm. so they've failed with all of the aforementioned. Just get out there and make those streets a hostile environment for knife carriers and for criminals. Let the parenting issues, the social work issues, the education issues be dealt with by all the experts in those fields. Yeah. That is not police work. Yeah. Be unpopular. Be brave. Be courageous enough to be unpopular. Get those knife off the streets. Do the stop and searches. Ignore the quite frankly, idiotic statement from Sadiq Khan that he was going to reduce stop, stop and search at all costs. Listen to Theresa May when she tried to do that. What happened? It all, it all backfired. And we've got ourselves where we're at, tragically. Yep. Donna, I, I believe we've got you back now. Um, Sai, you, 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 you cut off slightly before, but you were explaining to us about what you guys do in terms of working in the community and with parents to reduce knife crime in your area. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of jumping on the conversation that was just being had. I mean, I think as somebody who uh, is in the community, works at the grassroots level, is a woman of colour and identifies as, as black, I think sometimes there's a misnomer that, you know, somehow by being a person of colour, by being a black person, we don't want the police to do their job. And I just want to say, on behalf of all of us, we do. You know, it's not that we, we do not endorse criminality. We do not uh, endorse our young people, you know, living in this way that they do. We do try and help them, but it's the way in which the policing is done. And I just want to say that because I think sometimes we can kind of buy into an argument that says that communities of colour actually where this thing, where criminality is kind of kept and held, and there are those of us within it that kind of sign up for that. I do not sign up for that. And I know many people like myself. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes it's important when you're in spaces as a person of colour, as a black woman, to say unequivocally, I do not agree with criminality, but what I do want from the police force that we pay through taxation is fair and honest policing. So by all means, stop and search, but it's the way in which it is done and it's the intelligence that leads to some of these things that is often questionable. But yes, London is a place that should have police activity. Where I agree to a certain extent with your guests, where the policing has become a bit sort of you know, sit down and make everyone happy. There is a job to do. Enforcement is not nice in the very name, the, the description of the word. Sometimes you have to enforce to make other people feel safe. But again, I would say it's the way in which it is done. Going back to Croydon and the situation we've had there, it was about informing one another about that balance. Uh, whether we're volunteers or not, um, you know, it was about having uncomfortable conversations. It was about exploring the historical uh, kind of relationship that's been held for the last 75 years by the black community and the Metropolitan Police Service. But that is not exclusive to the Met. You know, we've had a poor, poor relationship with educators, within education, within, within uh, the NHS, with some of the statistics around, you know, um, matricide for, 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 for black women, not matricide, but, you know, the, the disproportionality within all of these institutions that directly affects us, we've been able to have those conversations. So whilst it's been about policing and being safe, 
The black community and all communities, working class communities, are not just um, bothered about safety with through one particular lens. It, it is a whole 360 of our lives, where our children go, how we are received, can we walk on the roads as a woman at night? Do I feel safe? So it's not just one thing. And I think that's why this conversation sometimes can be a bit sort of blinkered when we talk about safety and we talk about knife crime, it affects everyone. Okay. Eliane was a middle-class child going to a private school, and yet it still tragically took her life. So this is a bigger conversation than the one we're currently having, I feel. Thank you, Donna. Peter, what do you say to that? Donna, Donna and I have a lot in common. I think anybody that's paid close attention to what we've both said mm -hmm. with, with your fine hosting in the last few minutes <laughs> will see that there were a lot of threads of commonality running through what Donna said and what I said. Yeah. Donna wants policing. I want community activists, social workers, educators to do their job. Mm -hmm. Refreshing. Yeah, super. Donna, thank you so much. And thank you, thank Peter. You.